can't wait for the weekend to come around. I got a lot of hours over this weekend, and I'm going to watch the Savage Family Home Movies, 1967 to 1985. And this jump from 67 to 68 is awesome. I don't know what's coming up, where the kids appear and all of that. There's, I can't believe this movie. And looking at myself in that age, it's not like don't look back. I mean, I, I'm pretty much the same person. I'm just harder in my ideas. I've evolved. I've emerged. I've developed. And, uh, you know, in my own case, he said, well, when did you become conservative? You were such a left-wing guy. I'll tell you exactly what happened. It was a transition. I can make it simple. It's not that long a story. First, when I was a social worker in New York, and I saw that the uh, welfare recipients were living better than I, a college graduate, was living. I was sleeping on a mattress on a floor with no furniture in a little apartment in, in Flushing, New York. And the, the welfare recipient was getting f money from the city of New York to buy furniture because I was told that a dignified life required furniture. Sounds very much like the insanity of liberalism with regard to the Syrian refugees, doesn't it? That they're entitled to a decent life? And who's going to pay for it, you moron, you? You know, there's another way to deal with the humanitarian crisis that all of the crippled, degenerate liberals in the West can't seem to figure out. Real simple. You know what the solution is? First of all, you stop them from coming in. That's number one. That's what the Navy is for, to protect your borders. Number two, you build gigantic camps for them wherever they may be, and you drop them food on a regular basis and water, and you let them build a, whatever it requires, a migrant life in temporary migrant communities in safe areas in the countries that they're running from. That's what you do. That's what the, the world does to save itself from the uh, Muslim jihad that will occur as a result of this. I'm sorry to be so harsh, but I'm a realist. I know you don't want to look, you want to look away from the realities of this. But when the enemies of civilization, ISIS, are boasting that they've already injected 4,000 of their hateful throwbacks into Europe, how many of the 100,000 that your crazy president wants to bring into America will be members of ISIS or Al-Qaeda? How many? Do you know the answer to that? Nobody knows the answer to that. There's no way to know it. And so any sane nation protects itself. It protects itself with borders, and it does so vigorously, or there is no nation. And so I say to you, yeah, we could talk about home movies if you want, or we can talk about your transition from liberalism to something else. What did it? How you transition, which I find far more interesting. And we'll continue to play the music. And I still have not gotten to, but I promise you I will, my famous audio from September 11th, 2001, which I will play at 30 minutes after the hour. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Savage Family Home Movies. This is just a continuation of the uh, discs. <laughs> You think about our lives and you look back. I don't know how many of you actually have home movies. Does anyone ever look at them? I hear they're very, very desirable now in the art world. Super 8, eight, eight millimeter movies. And I've saved all of them. Everyone I knew had a camera in my day. Everybody wanted to be D.A. Pennebacher. Everybody thought they were going to be the next filmmaker. Some actually became the next filmmaker. Guys like Scorsese, I think, began with 8 millimeter cameras, by the way. Many... Many famous uh, move, uh, cinematographers, directors began with that 8mm movie camera. And so I have my stuff and I'm looking back on it. And I realize that what I'm doing for you now on the radio is just another disc in the box that hasn't been shot and put into the box. <laughs> box. <laughs> That's all they're going to leave behind is a box <laughs> of movies and 30 published books and God knows what else, some clocks. <laughs> I hate to be so... <laughs> So um, I, I don't know what the word is, but I'm just looking back on it all. I'm looking at my country, countries through hell before. I know that. I remember the 60s, the turmoil. I remember. I don't know if we ever survived the 60s when I look back. I think the, the country was so torn apart by the anti-war movement, which was driven by the communists who are always lurking in the background. And I think it's the same today, only now they're going in for the kill. The vermin in the universities and the, and, the, and the press and the government itself are now going, in for the, going for the jugular vein. When you flood America 
with that many Muslims. I'm sorry I'll say it like it is. They're not bringing in Christians from Syria. Stop already with holding back what you know he's doing to the country and why. Stop checking everything you see this, this retrovirus doing to this nation. Maybe if you all spoke up, we could save ourselves from this retrovirus. Body politic is infected. It may never recover. 100,000 Muslims, how many will be jihadists? Yep. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. All right, I'm going to pause now in our discussion of the free spirits, uh, the 1960s, things like that. We'll go back to the 60s, weren't all bad in a minute, and if you were a, a wild free spirit then, how did you become a conservative and when? If you want to define yourself as a conservative, I don't define myself as a conservative. I find those who wrap themselves as conservatives are phonies anyway. Uh, the ones who are constantly talking about the founding fathers as though they're gods. I mean, it's unbelievable to me to listen to this narrow banded absurdity. The fa founding fathers, who were they? I, I, don't get me started on this rubbish, this, this dreamland that everyone lives in. That the, the, the mantra of the conservative radio business about the founding fathers and everyone got along what, when there were 100,000 white people in the country who were skinning Indians alive everyone got along when they're robbing their land everyone got along well, come on with this nonsense already 350 million people of many races and languages and cultures you think everyone's going to get along and help their neighbor we're living in a different world and the founding fathers were not all angels stop already with uh, deifying them I can't stand it deifying Ronald Reagan, deifying the Founding Fathers. It's rubbish. They were men. And I proved to you over and over again they were men. Forget the slaveholding. That was part of the, of, of the game in, the, in those days. Put that aside for a minute. I gave you an example of how great the Founding Fathers were. That soon after the Revolutionary War, the farmers wanted to, well, they continued to make their own whiskey from corn. And they were making it, they enjoyed it, they enjoyed getting drunk after a hard day's night. And so what did the founding fathers do? Right after the Revolutionary War, they put together a larger army than they ever managed to muster in the Revolutionary War in order to put down the Whiskey Rebellion by American farmers, their own friends. That's what they did, the founding fathers. I mean, so let's stop deifying and glorifying a past that never was, because that's not going to help us get to where we have to be. So I got that out of my system. Now let's go back to today. So back in 9-11, 2001, I was on the radio. Not everyone who's in the business was on the radio yet. Some were, some were, it doesn't matter. And everyone reacted differently. I don't know how the others reacted. I wasn't listening to them. In fact, I've gone back to that again. I never listened to other shows, ever, because I learned something, is that if you listen to another show, you subconsciously pick up things from those other shows, and it's happened because people copy everything I do. Everything I do is copy. They don't even know they're copying it. I don't listen to other shows. I don't even read websites anymore. I don't want to read websites. I'm not going to refer to any websites. I'm only going to do my own show out of my own life, my own mind. That's what I'm going to do again. That's how I began radio, and that's how I uh, intend to continue in radio. So let's go back to what I did. Whether it was good or bad, I don't know. You're going to be the judge. Maybe it's embarrassing. Maybe I shouldn't play it. But anyway, here we go back 15 years. 14 years flashback audio savage open right after the islamo fascist slammed into the world trade center and the pentagon forever changing the nation listen ladies and gentlemen of the united states of america the radical muslim world has declared war on america we are at war we are at war attention america this is your Pearl Harbor. This is your Pearl Harbor in the World Trade Center today. A World Trade Center that no longer exists. Demolished by two hijacked airliners. Taken over by radical Muslims. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never forget this day as long as you live. It is time for you to come out of your sleep. It is time for you to put your hats on forward. It is time for you to throw your pornography in a bonfire. It is time for you to turn off your sports. It is time for you to turn off your entertainment. You will not have a nation unless you awaken and stand up like a man.
What can be done? I want to remind you that we are at war. We do not know the exact count of fatalities at the World Trade Center. As you well know, uh, radical Muslims hijacked these two planes. In fact, on the uh, web right now, Senator Orrin Hatch of the Intelligence Committee is reporting. We have intelligence that two connected to bin Laden set over private airwaves. We hit two targets. We hit two targets. Those two targets, of course, are the World Trade Center in New York City, no longer existent. I'm going to remind you that the United States went to war when Pearl Harbor was attacked, when 2,800, 2,700 or 2,900 boys were killed by the Japanese. Ladies and gentlemen, what will it take for this country to close the borders, to reassert English as our language, to stop the flood of asylees from every garbage can in the world? This is the result of a weakened nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at war. What must be done? Where are Bush and Cheney? What emergency steps are you taking? Are you offended at Bush's absence? This is a day that will live in infamy, but I want to tell you this. Many of you are frightened in the false assumption that terrorism cannot be fought against. That is the wrong assumption. It is the wrong conclusion. That is what you're going to hear from the defeatists. I want to remind everyone listening to Michael Savage that Japan's kamikaze attacks ended only after Truman dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. I will repeat that. Kamikazes never act on their own. They are financed, they are trained, and they are supplied by governments. Kamikazes do not act on their own. Japan's kamikaze attacks end after we dropped two atomic bombs on their homeland. We must atomize their training camps. We must atomize their training camps now. And I am not the only one who knows this. Maybe you've dismissed me as a right-wing nut. When I've been telling you for years, close the borders. Where do you think the terrorists came from? How do you think they got into our country? You morons, I've been telling you that ultra-tolerance is killing us. Well, the day has come. This is your Pearl Harbor. You're going to live with it just as I am. Ladies and gentlemen, where is our president? I will tell you that I am appalled that we have not heard from Bush except for one mealy mouth speech this morning. I am shocked that he was forced to leave the nation's capital. I am disgusted that even Hillary Clinton was on the White House lawn giving a speech today and nowhere could be found Bush or Cheney. And I voted for this man. Where is our leadership? Where are the good men gone? Well, this is what you get when you have a president who keeps saying, let's move on. By the way, the USS Cole was blown up a year ago. They're still investigating it. Maybe they should create a blue ribbon commission and hire somebody to go investigate it for 10 years. I am telling you that this is a direct result of ultra tolerance. This is a direct result of open borders. This is a direct result of a politically corrected society that is afraid to call her what it is it is. Everybody knows who did this. Everybody knows who's behind this. Everybody knows what must be done. Where is Bush? Where is Cheney? What emergency steps are you taking? What emergency steps are you taking now that we are at war? Do you have any idea what is going on? Do you have any idea what has happened to your country? Do you know that your life will never be the same? Are you aware that your comfort level has changed forever? Do comprende, amigo? We are at war. Close the borders. I've been trying to stop this. I've been telling you about it. I've been warning you about it. Where is the muscular reaction? Where are the men of America? Where is the leadership of America? Next, we're going to hear that we're going to get uh, counselors going out. So you can get on your hands and knees and pray. They'll tell you what color ribbon to put on. And that was me, 2001, September 11th. I guess I haven't changed very much. Just that everyone's repeating what I said then and making believe they invented it. Who first called for closing the borders? Me. Who warned you about massive immigration and what it would do? Me. Who's been preaching borders, language, and culture? Me. Mr. Free Spirit, Michael Savage. That's what I've been preaching. And where does it all lead? It leads up to today. What Obama is about to do to this country with the nuclear weapons for Iran and flooding America with Muslim refugees from Syria is beyond 9-11. It's 